As Africa rises, a must-have to many is to have a smartphone that gets the job done, while for some is to have the latest and hottest devices out there. Phone makers also strive to outcompete each other by unveiling a new smartphone every so often, mostly annually for top tier phones and biannually for low and mid range gadgets. The top 10 smartphones are ranked based on sales performance, quality features, and affordability. The hassle was tough to accurately rank the phones, but we had to come up with a list nonetheless. As usual, we start with the list performing at number 10 going all the way to number 1. Stay tuned and enjoy. At number 10 is the LG G4. Most people don't know too much about this phone because the life's good company don't quite hype up their devices like let's say Samsung do. It's an amazing phone but the launch was done without much gusto, the same way all LG phones have been presented in the past. It offers an exceptional viewer experience, from a colorful 5.5 inch quad HD display to a camera that captures clear images in almost any light condition. This smartphone is easy to handle with its gentle curls and convenient rear key. The design too is customizable with different skins and textures, giving you the ability to customize its looks because the phone has an interchangeable back. The LG G4 certainly looks more premium while offering a removable long life battery and a micro SD card slot. So once again, if you want to be unique and high end, the LG G4 could be the device for you. To many in Africa, it's a silent beast. At number 9 is Huawei P8 Lite. Huawei decided to go with a mid-range budget-friendly offering, and despite the intense competition in this space, Huawei P8 Lite managed to stand on its own. As the name suggests, this device is a mid-range iteration of the P8 and also shares the design language of its flagship counterpart. It's not without its drawbacks, but the P8 Lite is still a great entrant from the company and does good enough in the African budget-friendly smartphone space, as the need for fairly decent smartphones with dual SIM capability only comes mainly from Samsung. At number 8, we have Tecno Phantom Z. For those who aren't aware, Tecno was the first dual SIM mobile phone brand to hit the market in Africa. Phantom Z is therefore a dual SIM phone, and though software wise they provide a smooth user experience, updates to the latest Android software don't quite reach you on time. The Phantom Z happens to be the first of their products to run on Android KitKat 4.4.2. Phantom Z is stylishly crafted and cruises on an impressive 2.0 GHz 8-core processor. Yes, you heard me right, 8-core. This device also features 2 GB of RAM and a huge 32 GB of internal memory. You can capture wonderful moments with its 16 megapixel rear camera which has dual flash and a 8 megapixel front-facing camera with LED flash. So all in all, don't expect it to run at par with the likes of high-end Android phones such as those from Samsung, LG, HTC, Motorola or Sony. At number 7, we have Infinix Hot Note X551. The Infinix Hot Note X551 is yet another discounted smartphone which offers high performance at a pocket-friendly price. This is essentially an improvement of the Infinix Hot Note X507 bringing on board a high-definition display, more processing power, and twice the battery capacity. The phone is available in a range of trendy colors for uniqueness and inside the 8.9mm frame, Infinix has a fitted 4000mAh lithium battery. The Infinix Hot Note X551 is also quite powerful, hence it has a MediaTek MT6592 octa-core CPU and a Mali 450 graphic processor. Infinix X507 and Infinix Hot Note X551 are the phones that have placed Infinix on the African radar, and they together with the Tecno phones are the go-to devices for those who are on a tight budget and are not fascinated by brand names but are looking for an overall fair experience in surfing the web, social networks, some music and videos too, and a good overall media experience. At number 6 we have the Microsoft Lumia 630. The popular belief people have about Windows phones is that they somewhat lag behind. Microsoft Lumia 630 was welcomed warmly into the market since it was among the first in the new breed of Windows phones. 
with an average screen size of 4.5 inches, more RAM and a different design language from its predecessors plus a dual SIM version of the phone, consumers have embraced the phone because it has a fairly impressive screen and a camera for a phone that borders between low and mid range. The Lumia 630 goes at a budget friendly price tag which makes it favorable given that it has features and functionalities for people who need something unique, reasonably priced and not too beefed up spec wise to get the job done. Microsoft Lumia 630 is a phone that could easily have found itself in the top 5 or not on the list at all given that there are phones from the likes of Samsung that are on the same price range and quite easily deliver more thanks to their Android ecosystem. This device fits someone who is more into owning something different from the rest, from the operating system to the overall build. At number 5 we have HTC One E9 Plus. HTC has released a slew of high-end devices following the launch of its flagship One M9. And such a device is the HTC One E9 Plus. As name suggests, the E9 Plus is a larger iteration of the One E9. Like its smaller sibling is made entirely of plastic without losing its premium feel. Popular in the Asian and African markets, the One E9 Plus also features a dual SIM capability, which is emerging to be a popular aspect when shopping for phones in the African market. It also comes with a Quad HD display and the same 20 megapixel rear camera as the One M9 Plus without the duo camera setup as well as a 4 megapixel ultra pixel front camera which is great for taking selfies in low light conditions. With a powerful processor, smooth performance and stutter free software experience, fantastic display and HTC's signature front facing boom sound speakers, now with Dolby Audio, the HTC One E9 Plus is a great alternative to its more expensive full metal counterparts. With the difference in build material, allowing for a significant difference in the price point. Though it comes with 4G LTE support, it is a good idea to check for compatibility with your network provider first. At number 4 we have the Samsung Galaxy J5 and J7 series. These phones are trending everywhere thanks to Samsung's aggressive marketing, featuring daily on adverts and billboards. With access to 4G internet speeds, this device caters to those looking for a sturdy smartphone in the borders between mid and high range. The phones are comfortable to hold and have a perfect size that allows for easy handling as the only major significance between the J5 and J7 happens to be their 5 and 5.5 inch screens respectively. In terms of hardware, as mentioned, the phones feel great in the hands but quite obviously don't exactly feel like premium devices. But yet again, with an influx of many mid and high end smartphones in the market without a premium build, most smartphone users in the African market haven't actually owned or used a premium uni board device, meaning to many this wouldn't be a deal breaker. I happen to have had some time with it and the device isn't bad at all with glossy chrome material and not aluminium found on the bezels. The back has a removable cover which is evidently plastic with a glossy finish and the flash 13 megapixel rear camera and speakers mounted on one row across the back. It's the inside though that makes a difference as specs allows for smooth and fluid use for calling, messaging, surfing the internet, watching videos or playing music to using applications such as Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Snapchat and the likes. Their most impressive features have to be the 13 megapixel back and 5 megapixel front cameras, both with flash and the dual SIM capabilities both on the J5 and J7. Overall, for new devices in the mid to high range categories, this has to be one of the best out in the African market, bearing in mind the aggressive marketing and promotion Samsung do together with their e-warranty in many countries giving users two year warranties for their devices. This has been of help as most of the common issues that occur on Samsung's such as motherboard falls, boot up freezes including software and electronic issues are all covered. In general, it will come down to your size preference as these phones have more similarities than differences. At number 3 we have the Galaxy Note 5. Catering to the high end users, 
The Note 5 is a masterpiece with one of the catchiest parts about the phone being its stylus, full premium design and build, aluminium trimmings along the bezels to its all glass carved back. This makes the device look a lot more stylish and different from previous Note phablets. Samsung Galaxy Note 5 boosts a 5.7 inch Quad HD display powered by a Quad Core 1.5 GHz Cortex A53 and Quad Core 2.1 GHz Cortex A57 processor along with 4 GB of RAM and a 5 and 16 megapixel front and rear camera respectively making it miles apart from its predecessors. The Note 5 along with the Galaxy S6 series carry the best cameras of 2015. Other striking features are of course its stylus functionality, that beautiful screen and the fingerprint sensor to name a few. This phone could possibly be this year's best smartphone too, but I guess we must be fair by waiting to see how BlackBerry have stacked up their upcoming Android slider device compared to the high-end mobile phones in the market. Whatever the case is though, Samsung continued to dominate the African market with exceptional and domineering marketing and customer service. And until the likes of Apple, LG and the Nexus line do half the marketing that Samsung does, this market has only one winner. At number 2 is the iPhone 6S and 6S Plus. Despite continuously receiving negative reception from some corners of the African market for reasons such as lack of user customization, no memory card slot and an extremely high pricing, iPhones still manage to perform impressively in Africa. So much so that owning one is said to say a lot about you, something like a status symbol thanks to partly no contract systems available in majority of the African market, making owning one an expensive ordeal. Most African iPhone lovers consider iPhones as handy, cool, easy to use with a great premium build and feel to it. There are those who believe that together with a bigger and better screen, plus a better battery life and a phone that has an endless array of applications available in the Apple Store, it simply gets the job done in style and is what has kept many with Apple. The last two of their flagships have been amazing because they finally compensated for most of the shortcomings that iPhones had in the past, such as screen size. The iPhone 6 and 6S, though short of full HD resolution, are powered by Apple's own Retina display. The iPhone 6 Plus and 6S Plus, on the other hand, have a resolution of 1920 by 1080, making it full high definition. This increases the screen's pixel per inch and overall clarity, though noticing the difference will prove hard to some users. The latest versions, which are the iPhone 6S and 6S Plus, carry great and bumped up camera specs, improved battery life and a boosted processor. Other than that, the latest models don't have much of a difference in comparison to its predecessors, other than force touch technology. Though a very neat feature to have, how useful it will be right away to most users and whether it's worth upgrading phones will remain the biggest question. I think it remains to be seen what developers can come up with based on that feature. Majority of the market in Africa use SIM-free and carrier unlocked phones, making such a thing as contracts or mobile upgrades an almost never heard of phenomenon. This forces consumers to fork out the full price for every premium device they get. The iPhone remains an icon of status and a phone diehard users will go out of their way to get even though the price is usually way above the prices consumers in Europe and America are subjected to. Though the likes of Samsung, Sony, Motorola, LG and HTC continue to put up a fight, we expect Apple to continue perfecting their iPhone evolution. As for whether or not the iPhone 6S and 6S Plus are worth a move from its predecessors, I say not really, but if you've got the bugs, why not? Force touch technology to me is brilliant, totally brilliant, but what matters is what the feature would mean to you and your daily usage of the iPhone. And now, to the undisputed African kings of 2015, who without a doubt have come a long way to finally deserve the number one spot, it's the Galaxy S6 and S6 Edge. With a new build concept and a beautiful front and rear camera that takes stunning pictures plus one powerful processor, they certainly deserve to be number one. 
the only issue comes as a result of Samsung not naming their Galaxy S6 Edge as their flagship device, hence confusing consumers with an array of products once again, with the only difference happening to be the curved screen on the Galaxy S6 Edge variant. This is despite some criticism over the $100 difference between it and the flat screen variant. In all fairness, the marketing and promotion of the Galaxy S6 and S6 Edge phones within the African continent and the fact that Samsung once again gave us the chance to pre-order their latest phones, inclusive of a wireless charger and cover, was enough to take it to the top of the list while also bearing in mind the huge gap filled from last year's fail, the Galaxy S5. To add on to that, they showcased the phone's build quality and design, its full features and functionalities, such as the wireless and fast charging capabilities, in a way that amazed people's eyes. Some may say that the Edge variant isn't worth the extra cash, but let us be honest, if you've got the extra change to spend, the Edge provides a better user experience and feel than that of the flat variant. So Samsung launched the S6 Edge Plus, which is a bigger iteration of the S6 Edge, and also the Note 5 a few months later, it is safe to say that whatever you pick will have to be the best hardware build and camera of 2015. Yes, the likes of Huawei and Lenovo brought a fight but only good enough to be in the second tier of high-end smartphones in a market that goes for what's known to be the best rather than experimenting on emerging brands. Sony and Motorola managed to fight in the first tier of the high-end smartphone category once again. However, closest to number one in performance was the iPhone and the LG G4. Another device that people didn't know too much about was OnePlus. Sadly, this didn't make its way into the mainstream market as it was only available in China and other parts of Asia. And for this reason, it didn't feature at all in our countdown and review. Samsung, who once again released a wide variety of smartphones in all categories, together with Tecno, Infinix, Huawei, and Lenovo, dominated the low mid-range smartphones. In a market where Samsung dominates sales and marketing, from low-end to top-end devices, the Galaxy S6 Edge and S6 Edge Plus are together with the Note 5 the most impressive devices of 2015. As the high-end mobile market competition intensifies, with all top manufacturers going head-to-head -head with flagships every year, it's bound to get tough and exciting. Different form factors, features and overall device build, quality and user experience keep changing for the better. As we come to the end of the fourth quarter, it is interesting to observe how the Nexus 6P performs and whether there shall be a last challenger in the Android-powered BlackBerry Prime device, which has been building a popularity ahead of their much-anticipated launch in the next few weeks, as this could scarily be their last shot as mobile manufacturers. Otherwise, this has been the countdown of the top 10 smartphones in Africa, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and remember to like, share, subscribe, and feel free to leave a comment. See you again soon.